Welcome everyone you are listening to and perhaps watching Hot Sauce Sports. I'm your host, Pease Delores. I'm back. It's 2020. Barbara Walters was fucking right. And I am joined by Terry Tam, who's here. Hey, how's it going? I'm and, here, yeah. But you are not Barbara Walters. Why is it so fucking loud, Eagle? You control that. It's season two, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> it's two seasons that we're telling you. you Fuck. On your end. And we're back, I guess. I can't even hear myself now. I don't even know which one's what. Uh, B? Yeah, there it is. Okay. I think yep. good now. Input P has and I'm back. been discovered. And of course, a man who's discovered nothing but digital pencils. Our primary graffizium. Graffizium. Duke, how's it going, bud? I'm okay, boys. Whoa! Look at that! Look at you on camera. Someone made you look really pretty with some uh, graphites. Uh, yeah, you love it. it. You know so. what they say: the camera adds ten pounds. Just how it goes, man. Yeah. It wasn't the camera; it was Christmas. It was Christmas. <laughs> it was all the beer. It's because you brought a, a case of thirty-two of Molson X. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. <laughs> I've never seen a case of thirty-two. I counted thirty-two though. It's weird. What do you mean? I mean well, it's because after 20 or so beers, you Yeah, you exactly. Oh, yeah. that's what happened. That's, the, that's what happened. That's Makes issue. a lot of sense. There's also supposed to be another view on uh, Eagle. I've asked for it for 48 episodes now. I and don't have a tripod today. So you've never been a tripod. You're not on camera? What I've heard. I, no, I don't know if not we today. want Eagle on camera for uh, obvious reasons. That he's never paying attention to the show? Is that the one? Yeah, because he's always playing fucking Pokemon. No, we don't. I'm clearly, the most handsome. That's of what all I was going to say. Is because your voice is so sexy. We don't want them to see the real sexiness. <laughs> Your piece. The schlong. Yeah, yeah. Because we know you're packing. Can and we, we do don't want you to steal a girl's. Can we do you know that I mean? thing? Can we do that thing? Oh, because so many women watch the show. Uh, <laughs> can, can we do There's that one thing, in particular. Eagle? Can we do that thing, Eagle, where, uh, you know, everyone thinks their child is a celebrity, so therefore they don't show them on social media? Because nobody gives a shit about your kids, by the way. Where's my ca- is but this also, my camera? Can we, can we also hide your face with an emoji? Just to... With, like, a beak of, like, an eagle? That yeah, would work. That would work. Like I think an eagle, eagle mask, yeah. like a Halloween one. Oh, yeah. That'd be pretty sick. We can do that. Do all of these things. Although we can't really hear you through a mask, I can imagine. No, unless you, get the, unless you get that Chewbacca mask that when you open your mouth, it goes, mm-hmm. you know, does the whole thing. Or just buy a regular eagle mask and just cut a hole over the mouth. Or I can get, like, uh, they have this at Disney World now in the new uh, Star Wars area. Of course, you know area. Disney World. The Stormtroopers, but their lines are pre recorded and everything. So they either gesture or motion or push a button and it plays a line. So there's one that's my favorite, which is if there is only one Jedi left, it's not you. It's kind of mean. Uh, it is supposed to be mean. For little kids who inspire to be better. Yeah. <laughs> to inspire to be better. I know a whole bunch of stormtroopers are going to be fired. My brother was actually watching all. He's catching up on all the Star Wars this week, and um, I don't have much of an interest. And I remember how bad Episode One was, and I was like, "It's actually." So I rewatched them. I rewatched over the holidays. I rewatched the prequels. Okay. Of the prequels, yeah, it's by far the best. Yeah. Two okay, wait. Three. The prequels are are one, two, and three. Yeah. Okay, because the four, five, six were the best ones that I've seen. Yeah. Agreed. And I also I haven't seen two and three though, so I can't. I mean, I would say there's not. I haven't Star seen Wars two fan. and three. Oh, okay, you're catching up. I'm yeah. a huge Star Wars fan. I would say there's not even that many good Star Wars movies. I think we're all just in love with the idea of what it could be, more uh, than what. But it Empire Strikes is. Back. Was Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, is yeah I was gonna say. Yeah. I think it goes Amazing. five, four, six, one, two, three in terms of well, best to worst. There's some new ones I would even put ahead of of uh, of uh, Return of the Jedi. Are seven and live? eight, or like talking about Rogue One. Uh, alive? Yeah. Seven and Rogue One. Yeah, Rogue One is excellent. Yeah, and I, and I would put uh, seven ahead of uh, New Hope because it's the exact same movie with better that graphics. That is so true-ish. <laughs> yeah, so but I guess the, the nostalgia of the first one is. Yeah. So like, do you know yeah. what happens in uh, Episode Two, Terry? No, everybody dies. Nothing. Nothing happens in Episode. So two. I Anakin doesn't like is, is that what the one with all the talking, where they they're like they have like a court and yes. Itchy. It was the worst it one. Gets so, everywhere. But, but so, like, what's interesting is they it's actually came out a cartoon show that to bridge the gap between episodes two and three, uh, called uh, Star Wars uh, Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. It's Clo- ex- <laughs> yeah. Clone was that Wars? Colon Wars? <laughs> Clone Wars? Clone. <laughs> like Clone Wars. Nine seasons or something. Star Wars like, Clone it's Wars. actually it's amazing. It's coming out with episode with season seven now. Oh, whatever. It is. Like yeah. they wear a lot of cologne. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. part of. You have to watch episode two to understand why <laughs> that's needed. You don't. It's you terrible. don't. But it's terrible. Just, just read why on. Wikipedia. And then they pretend that that entire TV series doesn't exist when they get to episode three. Oh, but they three. do though. They, they're starting to redcon that in with the new movies. But anyway, yeah. Right, yeah. Wait. So in <laughs> Mandal- let's, let's Mandal- not bore people with that. Mandalorian. Then that's another story. Yeah. What the fuck? It's a big universe, man. There's a lot of you Star Wars. nerds lost me. And yeah. then let's not talk yeah. about the. You had one room. job, peeps. You had one job. <laughs> I told you, so you're gonna forget to start the timer today. <laughs> um, so, guys, 
we went on holiday for three weeks. Yeah. And what I realized is whenever we're not on the air, the world is fucked. Like what? Christmas happened. Well, like we're all, you know, political assassinations. Yeah. Uh, bombing of Iran. All this happened because we weren't on Political the air. assassination? Yeah. Who? The I, dude who was killed in Iran? Oh, okay. It's not political assassination. It wasn't a political a It is 100% a political terrorist. assassination. I mean, Australia's on fire. He's a and by the way, uh, your uh, beloved co-host is going to Australia February 22nd. So I don't know. You're not going. What I'm doing. I, I think they stopped all flights unless you're helping. Say you're helping. <laughs> what can I do? What can I possibly do? But I saw, do? I, I saw a map to look at the entire country's on fire. Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. true? Yes. yes. It can't be true. I mean, so. No, it's not the entire I'm country. I'm sorry. It's, it's part you of the. Do you not know how <laughs> facts work? <laughs> show me, show me, show me. I thought it was just like some. You, you want a live view of Australia? I want you to show. Yeah, Google Chrome, Google Earth it. Great. Let's be that but show that doubts the fire. Images. I don't have Let's be that show. Oh, but like, Listen. I know there's a lot of fires. I'm not saying There's fires all of flat this earth, Terry. <laughs> all of flat. All of flat. No, no, I'm saying I saw a picture and it looked like literally nobody should be alive. A lot of people are dying. And a lot of wild, more, more wildlife, importantly, a lot yeah. of wildlife, unfortunately, are dying. Uh, people are people generally live near the coast and it's not as bad, okay, especially okay. in the city. But Sydney is actually getting fucked well, up. Well, the thing about Australia is that there's like four cities. They're all populated. The rest of the country. They're all kind of far from each other, too. <laughs> but Sydney is the only Ooh. main city that's really suffering. Uh, from what I've heard, I could be wrong. But if you buy plane tickets, mm -hmm. right? If you buy plane tickets, what happens if a fire breaks out like this? Oh, like what, what happens is I call Air China and I change my flight to Bali. China. Okay. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Yeah. That's no, I don't want Laval. Yeah, Laval's on fire. They all wished. <laughs> <laughs> Duke. Um, it's great how there's just dead air. Can we talk about sports, please? No. Uh, well, we're not well, Why would yet. we? I was waiting. I, I did not want this to go on so long, but Eagle can't find Australia. Yeah. Okay, what is that, fire? That's where there's fire at the moment. Okay, well, the se the, the central area is pretty good. So just so, go there. Yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, I think there's just indigenous tribes. Well, that's pretty fucked up, man. Yeah. See, where we're going is Melbourne, which is like in the middle of all those <laughs> fires, but the fire's show, not there. Show yeah. me New Zealand. Why? Nobody wants to New Zealand. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. Oh, we're safe in New Zealand. Okay, Auckland's on fire. How did that happen? Just randomly. They just traveled across the water? They're rioting <laughs> for the fires in Australia. <laughs> 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 to get to right to uh, to bring attention to it, just like we on a weekly basis nope. bring attention nope. to nope the news. Nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna. I refuse. I refuse to listen to your garbage segments. Ah, Terry, it's the news. So much news happened. I missed you, buddy. I, I don't know if this happened to you. Yes, uh, to you guys, but like. Um, when I don't have a microphone and a platform for like five days, mm -hmm. I start ripping through material around people. Yes, because you dudes. love hearing yourself talk. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you. Oh. My wife bought me a book. I don't know how like, you did it. Right in you. here, <laughs> stop talking to me. Like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. Write, write your ideas in here. Uh -huh. And Pieces like breaking back on air. Pieces breaking down formations of the of the of the, I, uh, of, of the LSU Tigers to that, and she's like, "What the fuck are you talking?" And of course, it all devolved into dick jokes because that's what we do. Yes, exactly. And yeah. she was not impressed. Yeah. With, with your dick. With your dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's, she's like, you're drawing it, but why doesn't it look that big? And I told her winter's cold. Hey, yo. That's why. Shrivels up. Um, why? Why? Are we in a rush? On. Move on. Are Kinda. we in a rush? I just, I want to talk about sports so bad. <laughs> well, and we start with Jadavian Clowney. He's insisting that uh, at the speed the game was played at, he wasn't going for essentially an illegal hit. He saw a body going down and he just sort of like, Fell on top of it. Makes sense. But yeah. when, when we of course, he, dissect yeah. it, when we dissect the play, we're seeing it slow down to the nanosecond, and it looks like this. I can't. You can't dissect. Okay, go watch it. Watch it. Right. And it's only Carson. I don't know. When I watched it live, I thought it was intentional. To be honest he with you, he was going to get injured anyway. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that like looks super intentional. But no, I don't think it is because Carson Wentz kind of clips his legs under him by accident. So he's kind of just like falling on top he's of him. He's falling on top of him. I don't think it was... Which also you're not allowed to do, by the way. No, but he was just kind of like going to cut his legs. And then Carson Wentz, as he was getting tackled by the guy behind him, clipped Clowney's legs and Clowney's weight just fell on top of him. I just feel so bad leg. for Wentz. He he watched this team win a Super Bowl without him on the bench. Then he mm -hmm. watched them lose. Uh, yeah, and, and now he's watching him lose. It's it's just a terrible situation there. Yeah. It's, and it's tough. But like, the thing is, um, is there a team that's been... As unlucky in NFL history as this Philadelphia Eagles team. Every team's been unlucky. Look at the Saints. Actually, no, but the, I was just gonna say, 
the the, well, we'll get to the Saints in a second, but the Eagles started four players yeah. that were on three different mm-hmm. teams this NFL season. That's true. Crazy. That got cut by Yeah, they, they lost the majority of their starters. Um, um, there, also were, there were guys out there that I'm sure were Madden generated. I've never heard of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Who the hell's John, Ward? I don't even know his first name. Who's Gordon. John Smith? Well, just w- the guy Boston, right? That dude Boston, they're, they're running back. He, yeah. he, he was out of nowhere. It's like, it's like saying you're David running back Boston is Carmen is, San Diego. David Boston is back? Okay, no, not David Boston. <laughs> he was yeah. jacked. Um, he was jacked. Oh, Mr. Royce. He was so much weight. So but I, I guess the point is that I, Clowney was saying that they have the worst fans in the NFL. Yeah. The, the Eagles. These are the and same I do fans, not disagree with this. These are the same fans that threw snowballs at yeah. Santa, Claus. Santa Claus. So it's up there. Yeah. Philly fans They, in they chase Chris Carter out of town. Um... But they hate Wentz, though. They they do like they, they'll shit on Cloudy all they want, well, but they the couldn't thing. wait to rip here's on the on Wentz. They, they, no, they only hated on him. They only hated. I don't know what the fuck just happened. I can't hear myself anymore. Yeah. I mean, but you can keep the show. There it is. Okay, got it. Because <laughs> you're they, the one talking. Yeah, they only hated on him because he's not because he got paid a lot, and then they didn't make it anywhere. So with him, it's like they they didn't want Foles because they knew he was shit. And he got lucky, but they wanted Look, Wentz. Foles had and now they're stuck with Wentz, and they're mad that they're stuck. But with how him. is your backup quarterback Josh McCown when you have a quarterback that's injury prone? Well, that's that's my. Like, thing. They got a guy who's, I, and I don't know that Carson Wentz is injury prone. This injury has nothing to do with previous injuries. He got a concussion. Yeah, um, yeah. But the thing is, is that if they won, he would have been playing next week. And he was healthy all season too. He was yeah. healthy all season. And, and the thing is, and and, and not only that, he threw four thousand yards, mm-hmm. and he had no sing, no receiver who had more than five hundred yards receiving. Name me the receivers. That's insane. Go. I, I can't. Agalor. <laughs> Dropalor. <laughs> Dropalor. I got, I got you a list. I got you a list. Alshon Jeffrey. The one time about injury prone. Alshon Jeffrey. Yeah, exactly. You, you want to hate your fantasy this season? Draft, Draft Alshon, Alshon Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Deshaun Jackson is injured. Alshon Jeffrey's injured. Nelson Agalor drops balls. There's also Arkansas got injured. Arkansas Arkan Whiteside, which I think was injured too for that game. Uh, Zach Ertz was injured, so they were stuck with the. Zach, is that, did you know Zach Ertz had a lacerated kidney? Mm-hmm. I had no play? idea. How Can do you play with a lacerated kid? Because he's a fucking professional athlete that gets paid millions of dollars to do it. Okay, no, that that's not that doesn't that doesn't explain anything. Yes, I don't know how you play with a lacerated kid. It I don't explains know. a you lot. You inject yourself with a whole bunch of painkillers. That's yeah. probably that's the answer. In, yeah. in a league where it's illegal to smoke a joint, that's crazy. So, just fill change. yourself full of those painkillers. Those are fine. Did we talk about how it's legal? Uh, the MLB is uh, yeah. Was that was the last show we did. That was the last thing. That, that was like a oh, month ago. We did though, because it feels like we haven't spoke about anything. Well, just because it's been three weeks. Also, that show, I was completely checked out. Yes, that's a good way to say you were an MLB player who was. <laughs> yes, exactly. From that, that episode, I was uh, I was medicated, highly medicated. Mm-hmm. Where this episode, I am not. Um, we I also saw was, this though. play at the end of the Patriots game. Uh, got a lot of traction actually on. on How on hard did sauce. you get watching that, I, dude? I saw the Bills and the Patriots lose the same day. Yeah, it's great. I just had a Viagra level erection. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, my erection was like... Why do you want the Bills to lose? Bills Mafia, bro. Dolphins, baby. Oh, okay. Fuck sense. all AFC East. What do we watch? All trash, except for Miami. Who is most trash? I want to talk about the AFC East right after this. It's and my... Very hard to do. My opinions. Eagle, why do we have you employed? Is this the pick six? I can't, I can't tell. By Logan Ryan, uh, the former Patriots. Do it again. To end it. The two of them together. together. Yes. Very professional. I mean, it's... We'll never see this run again, Jim. Brady's pass, it's intercepted and returned Not Brady's fault. But I like what Romo said. What Romo said is like, this is the best thing that could have happened to the Patriots. Because it's easier to score a kickoff return touchdown than it is to score from your one. True. As they had nine seconds left. True. Um, However, I will say, I'm having trouble deciding what is a more fitting end to something. That throw by Tom Brady okay. or Eagle not being able to use a clip we posted mm. on our social media. I, I, the question was a bit convoluted. Just wait for the next clip where you gave me the same link to this play. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have time. You best, can find the Best clip. produce show ever. Jesus Christ. Um, so anyway. so, uh, Brady, uh, so Brady so Raiders. Before we move on from Eagle, what happens with Tom Brady at this point? Raiders. He's going to Raiders. I'm telling you now. John Gruden has had enough of Derek Carr. He's uh, all, all like ever since the the season has ended. Even throughout the season, he's been criticizing. He's been criticizing um, Derek Carr. So but he's I, done I, it. I, I just he just he's a really old school guy, and I really think that he's gonna make he's gonna make that that pitch to uh, to to Mark. Not not as if Mark Gruden's gonna 
gonna gonna care, but but he's done it in the most empty sacked way too, where he, he like he like yo pay way too much money he, too. He, 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 he like attacks. He attacks Carr, and then in the next sentence, yeah. like, yeah, but he's playing well. He's improving. But name me a team that will overpay for Brady as much as the Raiders will. Oh. Um, the Miami Dolphins, if they Miami draft Dolphins. a Tua who can't walk. You got um, really nervous when you saw your face on TV. I hate, I hate looking at myself. Really weird. Like, <laughs> you really watched him, you went like, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah. all right. I don't like it. And uh, it is. I can see uh, the Chargers to give in, because, uh, like. They, oh, yeah, that's true. They, they, they might not draft a quarterback and take Tom Brady and see if they can get anything out of that. Is Phillip Rivers in the in the script? Philip Rivers is not, but he's in his last year. So Philip Rivers, that's he doesn't even live in the same city as the team. That speech that he did was very emotional. It was it was a nice speech. It was a nice little press conference. He started crying, and you saw like a, a different side of Philip Rivers because normally he's like a fucking asshole on the field. He is the most uh, college meathead uh, frat boy of all time. I don't think so. I I don't peg him as a fr- as a frat guy. It's just what he looks like. Though. No, no, he looks like a uh, good Larry Sid. You know what I mean? Like he's really, uh, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Uh, he's you really. You made laser uh, sounds. Like he just, you know, he has like eighteen kids. Mm-hmm. He does have eighteen kids. You know, he he drinks Labatt and Budweiser or and or Budweisers. Just that. No, but I, I see it as the opposite. I see it as he's like uh, Philip Philip Rivers the fourteenth. Um, and he has all those children so that he can have his own rowing team, and uh, he's got to retire. They escape, they escape to the Catskills in the summer. He's got he's got to retire. He's got to retire just because. Listen, they gave him this giant limo that he can drive to and from, right? Mm-hmm. But he's not, he's doing retire. that every week from he, San Diego he drives, to L.A. He doesn't he drives his own limo. No, he doesn't drive himself, but he has a giant limo with a huge flat screen in the back. Yeah. this is well documented. Yeah, for, yeah. Porn, for sure. Yeah. So, and I mean, even with a PlayStation in uh, there, and like he doesn't waste sperm. We've known this. <laughs> <laughs> he said he, he has the driver bring it back to his wife. He's like, drive back to San Diego immediately. Make Dump sure it she in gets my wife. This. Here's the baster, and then the and the baby comes out. Don't Me- confuse it for the baster we have at home. That's for Thanksgiving. And then the baby comes out Mexican because your driver's Mexican. So what were you saying? Sorry, I don't know. I, I was just saying that he's just not going to do that route again. I, no, I, he after won't, a whole season of that, I doubt he's going. He's not coming back yet. to San Diego, but he, he's going to play in the NFL again. Well, he, threw, he threw for five thousand yards this year. Right, right, but I, I, I don't see a fit. I don't see a team that that would work. You know what I mean? Like uh, mo- most teams, you know, at the very settle. least, they'll sign a contract as a backup. You don't really? think? You think you would backup? I said at the very but worst. Name me fucked. But if you think Philip Rivers Colts? is a backup, Colts maybe anywhere. Yeah, exactly. That's maybe the Colts. You might. But even the Colts, like, I they see have more Jacoby Brissett. So I don't know why they would want Philip Rivers. Jacoby Brissett is a lot more capable and, than. But the thing is, ha- that, over the last season, the thing is that they just paid Jacoby Brissett as like a really high, high paid backup. Yeah. So they're. But they're, they're but okay. Phil, but Phil Rivers won't cost you a fortune at this point either. Yeah, they're okay with not paying him. They're okay with not starting Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, because they were paying him to not start in the first place. That's it, exactly. So, um, that that's about fair. But yeah, so so do you guys think this is the end for uh, Tom Brady in? No. Like, can you imagine his last throw is a pick six? Nah, it's not gonna happen. I'm it's sorry. pretty. Rough. It's more likely to me. But he'll start. He'll start for the Raiders if they if they decide to pay him. But do you think? But if that's what you think? But how are they going to be able to afford him and Carr? They're not going to keep Carr. I'm telling you now. They're getting. They're, they I've they got all the guy? signals. I there's. They just. It just not. It doesn't feel like it's going to work. Did they pay him his guaranteed money? There's also the question of Josh McDaniels is interviewing for a head coaching position, which he has previously done. Yeah. La- I think last year or year before, whatever. Well, he it was. did it to the Colts, and then he just said, "Fuck you, Colts." Exactly. I'm not so, but one of the explanations was, well, maybe he was told when Belichick retires, he takes over as head coach for the Pats. That's what it is. But is that this year? That's is that not that, happening this year? In which point. case, now why he's interviewing again? Is that's Brady going to stay? Is Brady going to leave? I think there's yeah. a lot of big questions with the Patriots well, organization right now. That's my point. Is that everybody? He's talking about if Brady's going to leave or whatever. Belichick might just be fuck you. I'm gone. Always ahead of the curve. This guy. So I don't know. Just not in that game. Maybe not in that game. Yeah. But I think I, also, I think, I I think Belichick also, is done. Just this, I really game, do. this season, the fact that you you gave Tom Brady that surrounding cast is an insult to his greatness. Yeah, I mean, uh, he had two weapons: James White, Edelman. He had really no tight ends. Nikhil Harry was supposed to replace. And like Gronkowski. we saw, like, we saw Josh Gordon in the out. beginning of the season, and he didn't look explosive. He looks like a guy who's aging. But they also gave him Antonio Brown, and that didn't work out. Not not anybody's fault. Okay, but, but like, like when that didn't work out, though, you did nothing. You got Mohamed Sanu. Mohamed Sanu. De- who's Derek, sorry, Derek, just to go back. Derek Carr has two se- has four seasons left in his contract. Glad we're talking about last, Derek Carr. His last two seasons, the next two seasons are going to be nineteen million per. But it depends on are his guarantee. It depends money, on the structure, though, because 
it might cost them less to keep him on the roster. That's it, exactly. Because mm-hmm. it's guaranteed money. If it's not paid, they're still going to have to pay him that money. It's complicated. It depends on how the the well, how, they, how they structure their how contract. How they structure yeah. the deal, exactly. Just like, um, remember Scott Gomez's contract? Everybody thought he was getting paid seven and a half million dollars a year because that was his cap hit. But towards the end of his career, end of his contract, he was getting paid like a million. What's the point of the pass interference challenge? It is to challenge it. Like if you're if you're not going to challenge that play at the end of the Saints game, um, Eagle, did you find it? No, but you can't cha- you can't challenge it. You can't challenge that because it's a scoring play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if the NFL is not going to challenge that, yeah, the, the NFL is not going to challenge that play. Apparently, the NFL looked at it. No, no, no. They looked to see if that he maintained possession and all uh-huh. that stuff. They didn't. They did not look to see if it was a penalty. Because our reaction, all all three of us watching the game, was like, "Well, that's penalty. textbook." Plot. It's if you read the it's rule. What you describe offensive pass interference? It's the thing you look for is the extension of the arm. When you're done this, legal, I want to see the rule itself. Cousins throws, passes, caught for the he win. Says it right away. Kyle Rudolph and the Vikings are moving on. Twice. Twice. They, they have had three seasons end on the last play of the game. Absolute stunned silence. Oh, the, 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 it gets the Vikings, two of them. Against the Vikings. But that wasn't the pass interference last year and the, pass, the non-call pass. The, the Vikings was a bonehead play by the defender. I Correct. I don't think I, – I, I, do, I do understand that it's shitty that they didn't review the play. That being said, having watched it a million times – I see it pushing and shoving on both sides. Okay, no. But so you the, see the full extension. Yeah, there's pushing and separation. But you, also, but you also see Marcus Williams grabbing his arm. So that's that I, get, I get that. But, but the, the way the separation was created was by fully extending his arm. So yeah, which exactly. is offensive pass interference. You so gain an advantage. There's also defensive it. pass interference on the same play. Fine, offsetting penalties. Redo the play. That's not, there's no defensive pass interference on that play. I I agree with it because you there's have a pulling of the arm. But you have you have no, the first allowed, five yards. You're allowed hand fighting. No, I mean, before entering the end zone, he pulled on his arm. You're, but, al- but you're allowed hand fighting. But you're allow- and you're allowed to make contact within the first five yards, which he does. Yeah. I, th- I guess what, it, what happened is they probably just didn't want to be the story. They, it probably in their head, they're like, let's not make a call yeah, here. But by making the mistake, you're always going to be the story, <laughs> right? Like, either way, you're the story. Either you're the story because you didn't overturn I do, it. I do agree that it's, I do agree that it's, it's horseshit, this whole, this whole uh, challenging of, of pass interference, because they've, like, throughout the whole season, there's been very clear pass interferences that haven't been overturned, mm-hmm. you know. So it's it just it just seems to me like throughout the, and then towards the end of the season they started to overturn them a little bit more. But there was a period, there's a good like six weeks this this season at the beginning of the season where they just were not they were not overturning some of the most blatant blatant offensive offensive pass interferences. So it's because it's, it's the ego, it's the NFL's ego, the referees' egos. They're not gonna they're not gonna go ahead with it. It's like it's just. It's stupid if you're going to implement something that you're not going to be able to use. It's like if you, you they implement your dumb thing with the, the virtual first downs. Oh, you mean, you know, having S- actual technology? Yeah, exactly. Like they have in every other sport at this point? It's like if they implement that and the ref's like, oh, no, no, uh, it's not a first down. I did it myself. <laughs> That's what they're doing. I, I called out the 90-year-olds with yeah. the chains and uh, they, they took them five minutes to get here. He ran down here very gingerly. And, and I, I placed the ball randomly as to where I think the knee went down, but have no actual idea. Yeah, like I threw a little ba- a bag on the floor, and that's mm. exactly where the ball went. Because I'm more accurate than the quarterback yeah, exactly. <laughs> who threw slightly <laughs> behind the receiver. <laughs> so therefore, I know. Uh, also, when the, pick, when, the, when the punt went out of bounds, I know exactly where it was from 30 yards away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the one that fucking makes me lose it. Yeah, yeah. Is I see these old refs just throw this blue bag, and I'm like, what? Yep, N- saw it. I saw no it. way they know exactly where that ball went. There's Seriously. No way. Um, also, at the end of the game, this is kind of blown in proportion because there's, there's an angle that shows kind of that it wasn't as bad as it looked, but Diggs is doing that, the, the, the Saints dance at the end of the game as he approached Sean Payton, and then like they shook hands or whatever. But in, when you see the actual view of it... What's the ha- dance? It, I, I don't know. I, I, can't, I don't know what it's called. Or I saw the picture, but I don't know what the dance is. Yeah. and so But the thing is, is that... If you actually see like the, the field cam that was behind Sean Payton, yeah, sorry, that's Diggs is not looking at Sean Payton. He has no idea he's there. He's only alerted because Sean Payton is like, hey, man, good game. Yeah. And then he immediately turns to Sean Payton, shakes his hand like super respectfully. Yeah, yeah. Like it was just that one picture made it look so bad <laughs> and it's not what happened. I love it. It's I like if we find trolls. out that kid at Tiananmen Square was actually a tank driver who was just getting picked up. But is there is there a more complaining franchise than the Saints though? There we go. Yeah, he, he didn't even notice him. Correct. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I 
appreciate you. I it's will nice, say though, nice, Diggs, nice thing to say. Diggs got a chance. Somebody. Diggs got a chance to actually dance and and at the end of the game because he did zero things during the game. So no, he, he, he definitely used his gadgets. mind though. He threw his helmet at one point. Yeah, it's crazy. That's the Kirk Cousins effect. Oh my! God. That was a dime though. He threw it. It must be so frustrating to, to play have for him. Kirk Cousins. Oh, to play with Kirk Cousins because yeah. I'm sure it's frustrating to play with uh, with. Oh yeah, do, yeah, for sure. Like he was covered like crazy that whole game. Cousins did the right thing. He didn't. He they didn't throw it towards him because he knew it was he was going to be picked. And Thielen was open a yeah. lot, all game, all yeah. game. A lot. I guess it's because like Thielen had that had that that fumble at the beginning of the game, so he probably felt like he should get the ball more. But he was just blanketed the whole the whole game, which is crazy. He was he was blanketed by Janoris Jenkins, which I had no idea was with the Saints now. Well, yeah, they picked well, him up because he, he got, got cut. cut by the Giants. Yeah, over the R word. Yeah, over the R word. Um, Josh Allen, <laughs> the Redskins. Josh Allen looked like an R word. Um, at Josh the end, Allen is at the end of this game is taller than I thought he is. He's very tall. Yeah, that's his thing. Did I, I, <laughs> there was even like there was a, an account that was like ragging on on I think uh, on our boy uh, Jay Glazer, and the the account was Josh Allen is tall. At Josh Allen is tall. He was a Bills fan. Um, but yeah, yeah, like it was. Did, did you guys see as as Josh Allen's running at the end of the game? Just like ninety seconds left. And he pitches it backwards towards nobody, which at least has stopped the clock. But it was a, a super necessary risk by a guy who at that point had actually played pretty well. And that was only the second most terrifying thing I'd seen. The o- other most terrifying thing was Josh Allen's actual face after he realized the game was going overtime. Did not look excited. Did not look like, okay, thank God. Yeah, at least we got, we got a new chance. We got new life. He looked terrified to yeah, be in overtime. No idea. He had no idea what was going on. I even thought he even knew it was overtime. He's just like, so the game ends in a tie? Yeah. Both teams just lose? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all go home. Everybody's even. And we still lose to the Patriots. Booker, Booker really tall? Booker McFarlane, which throughout that game was hilarious, by the way. Mm-hmm. Booker McFarlane had the, the worst slash best game ever. I have, I have a, a Booker McFarlane take later, but he go did, ahead. He did the penis drawing. That was always great. We got and a lot of views And he talked about how the, the two guys were going to come inside as he drew yeah, the penis. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. just all over the place. He for sure does it on purpose now. But he was he was praising Josh Allen the whole game. And but Josh, Josh Allen, Allen can make a mistake. Josh Allen would make a crazy play and then make two dumb balls. That's that's his that's the his whole season has been like that. He's but been I, I don't think But he's really young though. He's really young. So mm-hmm. I was talking about I mentioned before, but the AFC East in like three years, if the Dolphins do it well, if they draft well, then the AFC East is gonna be very dangerous because the Bills are young. My guy. The My Jets guy. are the young. Miami Dolphins have spent Two decades looking for a quarterback. What makes you think they're going to find one now? No, it's because they have 17 they just draft did. picks. Fitz Magic. I know. The, the, the quarterback of the future is 37 years old. <laughs> I like it. What if, what, if they dra- what if they go with Joe Burrow's first round? First they won't. Not he's get going him. to the Bengals' first pick. Oh, Bengals are first pick. Bengals sure. all, already... Because he's from there. He's from Ohio, no? I, yes, Joe Burrows? he is. He is. I think he's from Ohio. And he was actually at Ohio State uh, in his first year and then oh, transferred go, to yeah. LSU. <coughs> um, I mean, they should trade up, man. Give up one of their picks to get Joe Burrows instead of Tua. That's going to take a lot, though, because the Bengals have already showed all the interest in the world for, for Joe Burrows. And I really doubt that the Bengals have any intention in training that pick. But That's their guy. I don't know why everybody's hating on the Bengals, too, Like when it comes to this. It's like, okay, yeah, they, have, they had a bad season. They're getting the first overall pick. And everybody's like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's going to go there. What's so bad about Cincinnati? Well, it's, it's just it's generally everyone's perceptive, perspective when it comes to the first-round pick People always say, "Oh, he's gonna go to whatever the first, whatever the last, the, the the first pick is. Oh, he's gonna go to Carolina." And they forget, like, yeah, but the that's the piece they might be missing. Yeah, that exactly. Might make them a great franchise. Oh, I mean, you know? Cincinnati's but gonna just, have some rough years. I know, I know one thing for certain. He could have been the missing piece oh, for Ohio fuck. State. You think so? Well, he was there, and then he went to LSU, and LSU throttled Oklahoma. I have a problem with the way the NCAA is choosing. I know, I know, you guys are gonna call me a homer and whatever. Yeah, but yeah. There's an, I, what's the difference between how the NCAA is choosing teams now and how they did it before? It's just based on the record. You don't have the best four teams. You just have the best four records. So who are the best four teams this year? The, the best Okay, Oklahoma's not one of them. Oklahoma, oh, so they, got, they allowed 63 points, and they allowed a quarterback run of like 70 yards. So, yeah, no, they're not one of them. I'm sorry. So who was, who was in the Final Four this year? And tell me who should have been in there. Well, we had LSU. Oklahoma. We had LSU, we Clemson. had Ohio State, we had Clemson. Okay. I'm oh, not wow, so Georgia's not there. So, oh, well, do you, do you, so do you think? Do you think um, it's because he lost to South Carolina? That's, that's fine. But 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 do you guys like, honestly think? Like weird do you guys person. honestly think uh-huh. that Oklahoma or Ohio State were better than Georgia this year? I think. Oklahoma. Uh, do you think they were better than Florida? I think, this year? I think really Ohio good. State was better than than Georgia this year. I have uh, six 
offensive lineman. One of them's not even playing. Uh, <laughs> who would disagree with that? But anyway, um, and and don't forget, Justin Fields threw three balls. Also was recruited at Georgia. Yes. Had, had threw three balls that should have also been intercepted in that game and weren't intercepted. Clean in the hands of defenders. I like Justin Fields. He is but I, I like him too. No, I like you, him too. But I'm saying that yeah. team is not ready yet. But you have oh, a point. Yeah, you have okay, a point fine. in the, in in the sense that. They both had identical records, and they both lost to unranked teams because uh, Oklahoma lost to Kansas State. Well, no, but the so well, thing is, L- um, Georgia had the extra loss to LSU. Okay, but LSU's an NFL but, team. But so did <laughs> o- so <laughs> Oklahoma. Oklahoma also lost to the LSU, but they got throttled 63-28. to 28. Yeah. So that's so it's almost like they had identical records, and they had a similar missteps. So well, but they lost in the playoff game. Is the what, what makes you think that, that Georgia is more deserving than Oklahoma? Having watched the games, like they're they're a better team competing in a harder conference. But you're also assuming that people that are making these decisions actually watching. Yes, yes, because yeah, yes, that's their job. Yeah, I not. thought I thought Florida was better than them. I thought I thought Georgia was better than those two teams. I thought that uh, Penn State was better than those two teams. Jerry Jones. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. Jerry Jones paid it. He paid he paid for it to happen. What, why? He's yeah. He's in the Oklahoma guy. No, he's an Arkansas guy. Arkansas. Yeah. Fuck. I always mix up those two. Him, right. him and Bill. Same Clinton. colors. It's it's honestly like, I don't see the point of having uh, this playoff. If we're just going to choose the four teams with the best record anyway. The reason why you think he's an Oklahoma guy is because Barry Switzer coached at Oklahoma. That's exactly why, actually, there. Yeah. I mean, I knew exactly the history of Barry Switzer. Yeah. So, But they played together at Arkansas. That's why they're friends. So why the hell is an Arkansas in this? Because Arca- they're terrible. <laughs> they're terrible. Because they're awful. They're probably they've been, they, I think they've won seven games once in the last 15 years or so. Sucks. Um, but... So do you guys think the system's actually working, or is it just a rethread? No, no, it's not working. I mean, Ooh. no, no. I'm sorry. It's Arkansas two and ten. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is. It, it, it is working. <laughs> it's it's it's, go, it's is it a giving lot us better. The four, but are they giving us the best four teams? Uh, I think so. I think, I think it's giving us the. I think it's giving us. So it, when the best four teams are sixty three to twenty eight. Oh wait, just one second. Those three teams are interchangeable. The ones you said: Oklahoma, Georgia, and Ohio State. To me, they're interchangeable. Whatever they decide to do, that's fine. But I think there should be more teams. There should be eight teams. One hundred percent. There should be eight teams. And you play one versus eight. You do like a regular fucking. But, but again, but if you're ju- but if why you're do choosing, they have to complicate? But shit? if you're just if you're just bringing in teams based on their record, then why do you need a committee? Exactly. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Because so either either the committee is there to, to parse through the, but the film reason and actually look and be like, actually, you know what? I think this team's better, even though they had two losses or no, three losses. The whatever. reason why they, have they had a harder schedule or whatever it is. But on the like, for that matter, Alabama with a backup quarterback, I'm sorry, it was better than Oklahoma this year. Period. The, the reason why they have the committee is because they all don't play the same teams. But it doesn't matter because so you're you only choosing to, teams with the best you record. You have to figure out those regardless, style points. Regardless of who they played against, you're only choosing the teams with the best record. You're choosing. You're 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 starting with the teams with the best record. So Georgia was in the conversation. Then they start narrowing down. Okay, who's in for sure? LSU's in for sure. Who's second? Clemson. Who's third? Uh, whoever the fuck. You know what I mean? So then they're like, then they go Oklahoma. But the, whoever the fuck is the issue, Terry? Yeah, whoever the fuck is the issue, and that's why you get eight, and you get no complaints, and you can get an Ohio State in there, you can get a Georgia, and if Georgia's that good, then they'll beat whoever the fuck they have to play. And uh, and, it's and not, that's it. And this isn't even a Georgia point because again, I only I, I think that. Their window was a year before when it when they had, mm-hmm. when they had Chubb and Michelle there and, and all that uh, that it, or sorry two years ago Clemson rather was yeah. number three by the way Clemson yeah was number three yeah and four was Oklahoma because mm-hmm. yeah we knew that but the thing is is that my thing is I look at there's about four teams I would have had instead of Oklahoma but you're just basing on the record so then none of this matters so the teams you play against don't matter so that the way you played it doesn't matter your actual talent level doesn't matter you're not getting the four best teams you're getting the four best records so what's what, your, what, what do you want to do but the best what's records are how based do you on fix, how do you fix the, the best teams are based on the records but not necessarily you, because college football it's very imbalanced but it's, it's also very subjective too. too it's very subjective exactly. as, well, as well but what, what's your solution to fix but it, it but it's though. fine if it's subjective he doesn't have solutions he has Complaint, complaint, complaint. No, no, I have more, a solution. Is more teams. the fucks that are on that board have to actually watch college football because right. they don't. Well, they obviously don't. We're just assuming, though. No, 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 no. I'm know. not. I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> Those motherfuckers don't watch college well, football. It's like, why it's like the guys who watch the most why, football why ever. It, sorry. Why, why does it just have to be uh, four teams? Like, why can't they just well, have they more teams? Well, they decided it was four. I, I agree. I agree with Terry. That honestly, if you have eight teams, it's a better sample size. You're still going to have teams that complain that they didn't. They're nine instead of eight, whatever. Yeah. But it, it, it's a decent sample size. It's eight, fine. Eight is like a perfect number. I think they're getting to eight. They're just like kind of like feeling out how they're going to do it. It's also it's it's the length of the the season too. It's hard because they're but students. Who gives a fuck, man? They're students. They're it's not a, students. It, well, it, they're professional it's, athletes. They're pretending fuck. that they're students. These guys the are issue. professional fucking athletes, man. Start the season a week earlier. Which, by fuck. the way, 
And so here's the next Nothing's topic. wrong with playing a, a, a game in the dome on January 12th instead of January 5th. Eagle, I'm, like, sk- Eagle, I'm skipping ahead. I'll circle back. The next topic, we'll Tua declares for the draft. Here's one thing I noticed, by the way. Yeah. You know how many sponsors were, were listed in front, in front of Nick Saban? While he was make, while they're making the announcement, I didn't see five sponsors. <laughs> Coca Cola gives two million dollars. Coca Cola gives two million dollars per yeah. year to Nick Saban yeah. for his press conference. There's only two, I think, too, right? Why can't that? Why can't that money go to the players? Why can't that money go to the players? Nick Saban gets it. Personally? Yes, he personally gets it. They're a sponsor of Nick Saban's press conference. That is fucked up. That's man. insane. How Sorry, much is, how much is I yelled driving? over you. What are you saying? No, I was just saying. I think I can name Coca Cola and Dasani. I can't think of another. Dasani. I don't. Do those two? Owns I don't Dizani. remember the other. F- the other three, but there was five at one point. Coca Cola owns Dasani. Yeah, but they had both on there. That's why it tastes like gas. It's true. <laughs> You're right. So it's water is not true. So people who drink Dizani water know that not all water is the same. Also, just drink tap water. You so Aquafina, Dasani, you can suck my I, balls. I actually have something to say about tap water. So I had someone over to my house <laughs> recently. I had someone over to my house recently, and apparently, yep. I only found this after they. When I, I offered them water and they said no. So I said, oh, that's weird. Okay, whatever. And I only found out after that this individual does not drink tap water. Why? I, I have no idea. Oh, no, you know what it is? Quebec, they, Quebec heard, has heard the cleanest, cleanest uh, tap water in, in the, the world. In North America, at least. Yeah. And North America and India, we have the cleanest <laughs> tap water. Yeah, by far. <laughs> um, so the thing is, actually, I heard about that. That's, uh, that's actually a, um, a mental health issue called he's a fucking douchebag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your so instead douchebag. he's drinking Naya and Evian every fucking day. No, but I'm telling you, Naya tastes good. Evian tastes good. Fiji tastes great. Certain bottles of water. Esca's good. The rest of them can suck my we ass. Need your, we need your, an article, your power rankings on oh, water bottles. Yeah. Done. <laughs> done. I'm going to put it in the calendar. Yeah, please do. Please but do. I lost, by the way. Also, I need to look through the calendar because I don't know what's happening. No, no, I uh, I did it in it, uh, my Excel sheet. Uh, my computer crashed because I have to open my computer with this all the time. <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. Because I don't know what the fuck. For I those think. listening, it's attack. Um, it's, uh, so yeah. what's so now that two is declared, I still I think I think it'll fall to Miami because of the injury, but I'm also Homer. So, what, what do you guys think the destination is for two to a Tiger I I honestly think that um, <laughs> <Nailed> it. <laughs> I, I no. think that the Dolphins are probably the the best fit for him, and I I honestly think that that's their guy regardless of the injury because at the end of the day, like what what quarterback in the NFL hasn't had a huge injury. Well, now, he has had recurring issues, so it might be a chronic problem. Well, no, but here's the, th- the thing is, they're different injuries. Yeah, chronic They problem. happen to different... The chronic problem is the NFL, not allowing chronic. The thing is, is that um, two is two injuries are not related. So it just shows that uh, football guys are usually not doctors, just like in this room, because I was listening to um, someone break down his injuries who's from the medical field, I think, physical therapist or whatever and they're saying that there are two random events that happen to happen to the same person that doesn't make you injury prone it means you're just unlucky he might now go through the rest of his NFL career not having another injury or he might get injured every year it's not a telling telltale sign because he's not r- constantly getting the same thing injured over and over and I over. also can't yeah. think of another team outside of the Dolphins and the Bengals that desperately need a quarterback though like I can't think of I can't think of uh, like I mean, I, I, out of all the quarterbacks in draft, I've said this from the beginning, I, I love Jalen well, Hurd, yeah. but he won't be a first-round pick. He'll be maybe a second-round pick. The Patriots and Saints yeah, might take quarterbacks just because of the age of their quarterbacks. The Chargers are probably drafting quarterbacks. Look, okay, so you have, look at it this way, okay? Bengals are clearly going to take Joe, Joe Burrows. Then you have Washington. Washington's probably going to go for Chase Young. They have the quarterback that they drafted last year, so I doubt. But to be honest, they, they might be a wild card too. because Cause New coach and whatever. New coach and everything. Then you have Detroit. They're locked in. The Giants are locked in with Daniel, with Daniel Jones. Why, then you why, have, wouldn't, why wouldn't Detroit draft a quarterback? Well, the, the, uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew, they have uh, Matt, the Matthew that's Stafford happened. that's locked up for a long time. Well, why wouldn't they draft a quarterback? But they won't. They won't draft a quarterback high. Matthew Stafford is like 33 years old. But you also, you I, also I actually don't think he's that old, but I think, think he's very injury prone. The, the, How old he came in with Matt Ryan? You say this, right? But don't forget that the Lions always draft a tight end. Always. Or an online. They drafted Hackett's online. He's 31. He's 31. So, yeah. he, I mean, he has. He's going to be 32 in February. Yeah. But, yeah, but still. Um, but I'm saying, like, he's got three to four. Based on what we've seen from aging quarterbacks now, they, t- they tend to last till Then there's probably the Chargers. Right? The Chargers yeah. might be another option. So. Chargers, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Chargers perhaps? are on a massive rebuild, so there's they're, they're something. There. Jaguars, he still had I don't know. 19 touchdowns and well, five INTs with 2,500 yards. So it's terrible. Stafford? Yeah. But how many games? Because he was injured a lot. Uh, good question. Actually, he only played like he only played like twelve games. I think. Fucking Raiders need a need a quarterback. Bad. 
Even I don't care if it's four years old. Give me, give me Brady. I like Derek I Carr. Think. Imagine Brady in a ring. I actually don't think Derek Carr is that bad. I don't think Derek Carr is that bad. Still, he's awful. I yeah, think he's just quarterback. not motivated. Right? He played eight games, no, twenty-five hundred yeah, yards, nineteen five. That's good stats. Thir- at thirty-eight ten, five thousand. Yeah, that's amazing. That's yeah. MVP. That's yeah, Jameis Winston with twenty less ints. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Bucks. I mean, that said, like no, you no, got, no, you no. got not keep, even. It's more touchdowns. You got to keep Jason. You, you got. You need to keep Jameis Winston because we were all watching the Bucks this season, right? Like. Like, we can all admit it here. They were our favorite team to watch because it was just a calamity. It was awesome. Calamity, word of the day. Mm-hmm. No right. idea. <laughs> clams. <laughs> yeah, it's, a calamity is when you get a box full of clams. Oh. Our Wi-Fi sucks, by the way. It keeps, it keeps cutting. Yeah, so apparently it's, uh, the, the feed is, is lagging. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is lagging is some of these NFL teams. We might need to just get our own Wi-Fi and pay for it. Pay for it. <laughs> add your add your ad here. It'll be like forty five bucks a month. Yeah, um, Virgin Unlimited forty five bucks a month. What's unlimited is no the list of coaches we're gonna rattle off right now. It's unlimited to three, um, or is it limited? Because that's what the word means. Terry Joe Judge officially hired by the Giants. Everyone's hating on this. Who? Somewhat of a different take. I'll let you guys go Who, with it. Mike Judge, creator of Simpsons. Correct. He's now coaching. I think I believe you could, no, Matt Craig, Groening was the creator. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead's what you're thinking. Exactly. What were you going to say? Uh, I'm going to quickly just mention the next person we're going to talk about apparently was not even considered because Judd's paperwork was already being done and then the other guy got signed after the fact. So... All right. Well, but like, so... So, what's what your what's your initial thoughts about... Um, well, the, uh, first of all... Judge signing. The, the, the clear pick, the... the what everyone expected was Matt Rule was going to become the, which I wrote in my article too. Matt Rule was supposed to be the, the the head the head coach of the Giants. However, the Panthers offered him six years. Then the Giants the Giants called him. I have him. a gift for your dad, by the way. You just reminded me. It's the the Giants. It's called the Big Blue Wrecking Crew. It's nice. a book on the Giants. I stole it from uh, a hotel I was in Boston. He's gonna love it. Well done. <laughs> well done. So so Matt Rule was supposed to be the guy. I also don't feel like Matt Rule's really meant for nfl in 2019 he's a really old school kind of so when i asked you about joe judge Mm -hmm. can we stay on top (laughs) but you're saying but you're asking me about him being the coach of the of the giants i'm getting there i'm saying that that after no i i'm not a fan of joe judge because i'm just looking at what he had to deal with with the the, the patriots he had he had no receiver over a thousand yards you know but but that's not also but at the same time like what what do we know about these guys what do we know about about their about their methods of of training and and what their where their ideas are of of Creating and generating offense. So John Harbaugh was a special teams coordinator when he mm-hmm. got hired as the head coach. Yeah. So we don't know. But th- what are the other options? It was Marvin Lewis. Marv- apparently Marvin Lewis only would only accept a job where <laughs> Hugh Jackson would be involved. That's so stupid. So what what other options are there outside of maybe Urban and Meyer? And I'm so happy the Cowboys didn't bite well, on so like, Urban Meyer doesn't fit here's, that here's, here's my thing. Lincoln Riley accepted a new contract with Oklahoma. My, my thing. Smart. Because my, college is where the money's at. Of course. And like you basically, if you're even decent, you have a job forever. Um, like Saban. And also, like, you can just illegally pay your players under the table. You don't even have to be a good coach. You just have to be a decent recruiter. Yeah. That's it. For sure. Um, here's, my th- here's my take. First of all, I believe that he's secretly related to Aaron Judge and the Yankees push for this to get two judges in New York. They do not look the same, and they're not seen not nationally. At all. The other thing is, uh, but it, more seriously, these guys in the NFL, these general managers, the sa- all the general managers who couldn't look at a guy like Lamar Jackson and say, you know what? That's special mm-hmm. because they don't want they don't want to have to have any sort of vision for the future. They don't want to deal with actual coaching, actual improvement. They're like, no, no, no. Let's keep drafting the same versions of the same guy mm-hmm. that don't pan out for years and years and years instead of doing something that requires vision. Yeah. So a lot of times, what we get in the NFL and the NHL and the MLB and and NBA is you get rethreads because it's safer. It's safe to just hire a guy who has a track record, even if the track record sucks. It's true. So. If the Giants got an idea that, hey, this is someone we really like because I think that this guy in the future can give us something special, can make our team something special, then hats off to them. Hats off to them for at least trying to have vision. That said, it's also hard to believe David Gettleman has any sort of vision no, no, no. <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> More on him later. So Judge was before... David Gettleman's a flat earther. Judge before the Patriots was also special teams assistant for under Nick Saban. So I feel it might be a culture, a culture hire. One of these things where it's like, oh, he played, he coached under Saban and coached under Belichick. So you know what kind of coach he's going to be like. It's, it feels like a Giants hire. The Giants, lo- the Giants always hire the wrong guy, by the way. 
They had the opportunity to hire Bill Belichick, and they didn't. I mean, I mean, they have three Super Bowls, so they didn't always hire the wrong guy. They hired Bill Parcells. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom Coughlin was the right coach. I mean, Tom Coughlin was he very, good very coach. successful. He's a douchebag, apparently. Who, who, who do they have in between Bill Parcells and Tom Coughlin? I'll, I'll mind it. I'll mind it. Mind it. I'm very curious, actually. I don't even know who they had at coach. They, at one point, they, they hired they an ex, They hired a guy who like started working with the team when he was 13 as an equipment manager yeah. and worked his way up to it. And it's like my dad's favorite story to hate on the Giants with. And yeah, they, um, he was the head coach? I think that's who they chose over Bill Belichick. Yeah, over Bill Belichick and Nick, and Nick Saban. We'll, and we'll, and hey, you know, they're loyal to the people. Sean right. Payton was on that roster. Oh, wow, they had a lot of great teams in that coach. Okay, so and you're uh, saying from after Bill, Bill Parcells? Yeah. Ray Handley were for one year. No idea. That's the one. Dan Reeves for three years. I knew that one. Yeah, Dan uh, Jim Fossil for like Jim six Fossil, years. not Jim Hazlitt. That's yeah, Jim. Fossil. Tom Coughlin for uh, for a while as well. Then Jim Fossil was a good coach. Ben McAdoo. Well, when you say that, but Jim Fossil once took ben an interview with the Giants and he was talking about what they were going to do the next week, and he was breaking down the wrong team that they weren't playing. It was like, yeah, when we faced the Rams, well, and they weren't facing, they were like facing the Redskins, whatever it is. So, you know, he maybe wasn't as prepared as he should have, as he, as he should have been. Ben McAdoo, Steve, Steve Spang, Spagnolo, Pat Schirmer, Joe Judge. And you can't ben hire Ma Ben McAdoo, man. That, that guy. That you can't hire Ben McAdoo. The guy's the face of divorce. That, that do, you, do you remember when ba Ben McAdoo had like an okay season and the next season he came with his hair slicked back? Yeah. yeah. New York Daily was like, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it w I mean, maybe it was because of the hair. The no, it's because he, he got ripped on so much about his hair. And then he started fucking awful. around. and then But where it took. So, according, hat. according to Adam Schefter, uh, the when deal for young. Joe Judge was in place, uh, which is one of the reasons Matt Rule actually signed with Path was hired by the Panthers. Um, Mike McCarthy hired by the Cowboys. Are you ready to watch a whole bunch of isolation routes? Yeah, you. I mean, I know you're a big. Uh, you want to know? So you want to hear something hilarious? When you click on, uh, when you go on on a list on Wikipedia of all the New York Giants coaches, and you click on Joe Judge, it doesn't actually bring you to Joe Judge. It brings you to a, a baseball player from the '60s. Oh, nice! I like it. Nice. Um, do, I, judge. do I like McCarthy? I don't hate it. But it, when you I, you had asked me to make a top five coaches list, I thought you said top five of all time for the Cowboys. Yeah. So I did. <laughs> then I was thinking, okay, I'll make I'll make a top five uh, potential coach. And Mike McCarthy was, Mike McCarthy was <laughs> it was way too late because he had signed that yeah. morning. Mike McCarthy was nowhere near my fucking radar. I did enjoy your list of how Tom Lundy should coach the, 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 yeah, yeah, the exactly. Cowboys right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> did manage to convince Jerry Jones to spend one and a half million dollars on an analytics team. And a Knights together. He did? Yeah. Oh, wow. Four, 14 and a staff. Wow. pay each, 1.5 million. But also, hey, we're looking he, up, boys. He looking also, up. But he also he also convinced Jerry Jones for, to have date night together, where I believe they sat together, drank Chardonnay, and ordered pizza while watching. McCarthy Chicago. looks like a very generous lover. What would you want to yeah, do right? if you were invited to Jerry Jones' house? What, what would I do? Yeah. You mean, yes. What would you not do? Oh, what would I not do? I would not go to his room because there's probably a few children tied up in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I doubt it. Come on. Maybe not or, children. Some or like up in all of his previous faces hanging on the yeah, wall. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, that's more like it. That's more Ever like since it. the incident, he keeps a Zeke in a cage in his yeah. bedroom. Mm. He looks like he just smells. Like old people like smell? old people smell, yeah. you know? Like mothballs. You know like old guys when their teeth start getting yellow and it's like they, you know, you can tell they don't want to brush their teeth. Man, anymore. legit, if ever you have a chance, look up Jerry Jones' house on, on Google. It's oh, fucking I'm sure. something, man. That's sure. what we have Eagle Which for. bathroom would you shit in? Yeah, Jerry Jones' house. Oh, not the powder room. Not the one for the guests. I go to his bathroom. <laughs> like, like his en suite? Yeah. Like, hey, Jerry, I'll be back in 64 Hours. minutes because <laughs> I, I got to find your bathroom. <laughs> and then, like, so, like, this happened to me. It's like, not all my shits. Like, I has oil money. Not all my shits smell, right? Like, you guys have this too, right? Like, some of your shits are just, like, they're fine. You just pushed out some stuff and whatever. Oh, But sure. I have some that, like, it's like a corpse. Yeah, yeah. I, like, Christmas Day, I went to my parents' place. I left the corpse in the toilet bowl. I felt awful. Jerry Jones, I feel like that would be the day where I'm like, yeah, I gotta let the corpse go. It like we had too much, we had too much scotch, we had too much calamari. Bam, straight up. When I was in Italy last year, I had I was constipated for a couple of days, mm -hmm. and then we went to this beautiful restaurant, and it was amazing the food, and we kept on eating. So I, I was like, I'm only gonna drink water. I'm gonna flush all this shit out. It worked. I just I drank like four liters of water at the table. I went to the bathroom. I took the biggest fucking dump of my life. I couldn't flush it. I didn't even try flushing it. You, just, you ran out of water? No, no, I went, gonna, no, no, it was over the water. Yeah, nice, yeah it was. Nice. I don't think there was any water left. Terry Mountain. So I went to go see uh, the bus boy. It was a family owned restaurant. So it was, it was <laughs> hey, a family. Why? Why do you go talk to I go, me listen, I go, listen, man. I go, uh, I, f I did some damage in there. I need you to help me out. He goes, don't worry about it. 
and the guy went he in there. Bought a new toilet on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. You see him rip <laughs> out the toilet. He's like, "Don't worry about it. I got you, Brian, bro." I see him leave. He comes back with like this gangster plunger. I guess they have this issue a lot. And he, and wait, 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 what does it look he like? Comes that, what does he comes back out. He comes back out. Is like the, it was like a plunger, but it had like an. It's ribbed. Is it ribbed? No, it that's the one I got. Rib for, your, rib for your pleasure. Rib for your pleasure. <laughs> So okay, it had this like thing coming out of the plunger. Anyway, like an extension, kind of like a fish. Okay. Anyway, he comes out of there like three minutes later, and he's sweating, like <laughs> sweating. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and so he, are you? And, and, and I looked shit. at him, and I'm like, and he's like, he just gave me the thumbs up. I'm like, whew, you yeah. dodged the bullet there. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have said anything. I would just. I mean, walk I away. didn't. He did. Yeah. I would just walk away. <laughs> I, w- I would have walked away and like pointed at someone else. Like, but yeah, it was yeah. bad. It was I'm the tra- biggest dump I've ever taken to in my out life. Timeline. It w- did this happen during the meal, after the meal, beginning? So I was constipated. Like I had it shit properly for a couple of days. Just we, tell me. Is we were eating a lot, it? and as soon as like I ate my like, because it was just like was you tell the them appetizer? you want more food and they'll bring it. Okay. So we had already eaten a lot of plates, and I just okay. said, "Fuck it, I want more." So food. Towards the end. Yeah, towards the end. But you're still gonna go back to your table. So I now I get. I went back to the table and I continued eating. Yeah. Okay. Now I get why. Was it was it ropey? Was it like sandcastles in the sand? No, no. It was like was it just a big pile of sludge? It was it was logs, like heavy logs, mm-hmm. and like they towered on top of each other. It was kind of like a bunch of logs like this. That's not bad. Yeah, it's just amazing. fingers interlocked. Am I gonna have to cut That's this up good. and put it up live on? I imagine so. Yeah, I guess I imagine so because it's the most sports thing we've talked about. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> taking a shit, man. We go from taking a shit to some sad news. It's pretty of course. athletic. Dave David Stern passed away yes, last week. Seventy seven years old, I believe. Um, one of the most revolutionary um, commissioners in sports history. Not according to Jason Whitlock. Stop. Yo, we got to <laughs> speed this up. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we have two little things quickly. Um, we're, you know, eulogizing someone, Terry. Uh, thing is, <laughs> he, he did something I thought took a lot of courage. He got, uh, he turned the league over to Adam Silver yeah. when he was still healthy, when he was still alive and kicking. Uh, a lot of guys have too much ego for that. Mm-hmm. That's perhaps the most impressive thing he did was put his ego aside for the benefit of the league. Yeah, exactly. I think and David Silver's turned this thing into an absolute monster. Yeah, right? I think I think David Stern knew that he's kind of done everything he can at that point. And David Silver is a great commissioner, probably the best in sports right now. Maybe him and Gary Bettman. And it's and David Stern really brought the league to where it was, and David Silver's really put it on steroids. And David Stern, you can't forget, you can't knock what he did, man. He let the guys be who they have to be, individuals, and you know, and like, and sell the league themselves and well, promote he, he them. Well, he knew that marketing the stars was the way. Yeah, but he also made the rule like you know, like no fur jackets and things like that. You know, like and he was like, you know, if you're gonna come and you're gonna be, if you're not playing and you're gonna be on the bench, dress properly. Like, well, they also had this weird, they had a weird perception in the '90s that. It was like the gangster league, but in reality, they had far less incidents proportionally than the NFL, than the NFL the, yeah, or exactly. the NHL, for that matter. It just, well, um, yeah, and it's it's just that he did he did a lot for the league, and no, David Stern was was great, man. And I don't think I ever heard a bad word said about him, other than Jason Whitlock. Um, Jason that said, Whitlock let's let's dictator. take we took a moment to honor him. Let's take a moment to watch how the Sacramento Kings and the Golden State Warriors dishonored the memory of David Stern. Dishonored. I don't understand. Is that Barstool's Coley mixtape? Yeah, it's it's Eagle not uh, being able to produce the show. Just picked Aaron Fox and Smiley Geach diving on the deck. Give it back to Bowman to lay it up and out. Oh, oh, that's a man. Four on, that's a four on one. Yeah, the Warriors, you have to. If you missed any part of the game, just rewind that last sequence. <laughs> that was definitely the most. <laughs> Jacob Evans with another steal. Oh and my Fox God. With a great steal. What is happening? Uh, Oh, oh my God! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're taking a break. Locking when we come up. back, we and uh, you can uh, you can you can subscribe. Yeah, you can always subscribe. subscribe. They get the shows, then they choose to listen to it or yeah, subscribe not. on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and then follow us at Hot Sauce Sports on every social media. No one, uh, you can't be oversubscribed because that's not a word. Exactly. So, so subscribe just the amount of, right amount of time. Be a word. Congratulations. I want you to tell us about uh, your new gig. Hey guys, so great to be back. I'm really, uh, really pleased. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm hosting live from Studio 5 now. It's a show on AMI TV. It's current affairs, news, sports, entertainment, what's going on in the world. Or on a given day, we're kind of covering now which is really really cool working with an awesome team uh, of, of producers and the talents in Toronto I'm
here in Ottawa, kind of grinding away, doing things remotely. You guys know something about that, working on the, the remote uh, the remote broadcasts. Definitely. Blast, blast, blast with, uh, with, with. Definitely a challenge to do the remote broadcast. We're, we are struggling a little bit. Hopefully it'll clear up over time. Um, it's it definitely sounds like an exciting uh, an exciting opportunity. Uh, Dave, we love having you on. We know you're you're a huge hockey fan, and we want to talk to you about some of the th- goings on in the NHL. Uh, we saw Hines hired by the Predators uh, after being fired by the Devils in December. Uh, as he replaces Laviolette. Um, what are your thoughts about the hire? Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, we're Laviolette's to kind of get get the boot with John Hines coming in after that. Laviolette's only the second coach in Preds history after uh, Long. And the way that that New Jersey played this year before John Hines got fired, it really makes you that that the Predators are seeing here and his style that's going to help them uh, on track. I, I I can't I I can't quite figure it out, guys. I I, I know that when you're making a hire in the middle of the season. It, bit strange and i know that there have been enough interim coaches kind of picked up throughout the year that makes it difficult i mean peter laviolette was this four games so just past the halfway point we're already talking about a fifth of the coaches in the league being turned over so uh, the, 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 the um the pickings were slim but it's a really difficult difficult acquisition and and i don't know if that the move the preds needed i, I might have stuck it out with laviolette till the year was over I mean, Laviolette, he's, he's known to be a, kind of like a player's coach, and a lot of guys love him. A lot of guys talk really high about him. I guess it was just more of a kind of like a culture change. The, the, the Preds were built to last this year, built to do well. They haven't been playing well at all lately. I don't know what it is. Um, it, you know, ha- bringing in Matt Duchesne, you thought that he would have a lot more firepower. The D looks decent. Goaltending, not so much. Even Pecorine, I think he said that they're not doing well at all, and he's kind of said we have a problem in this locker room. So, I mean, it's tough to say. I don't know what's going to happen with them, but I know Peter Laviolette, we know the NHL, they're always going to fucking recycle their coaches anyway. He'll land somewhere else. Uh, but what do you think? you think the Preds are going to be able to make a run in the playoffs? I see them making it in. I just don't know what their run's going to be like. Uh, they're what? They're about four or five points out. There's a couple teams ahead of them. I think we're going to talk about Vancouver a little bit later here. I look at teams like Vancouver, I look at teams like Calgary, and even though it's all jumbled up and bunched, I I don't know if if they can get over the hump. And you do mention uh, Pekka Re- really struggling this year. And people forget that Pekka Rene is on the wrong side of 36 at this point. Yeah. He's approaching 36. He's fading away a little bit. If That might just be it for Pekka Rene. And I don't know if you guys saw what Mike Milbury said yesterday. About uh, Ryan Johansson, uh, Eric, uh, Kyle Turris, and Matt Duchesne, but he basically put the blame on those three down the middles. Other guys down the middle are never going to get it done for you. It's true. I mean, if you if your centers if your centers aren't if your centers aren't acting and they're not playing the they're not playing the role, uh, they doc, they occupy more of the ice than anybody else. You got to play be able to play a two hundred foot game, and if they're not doing it, I I don't know who else is going to do it. I mean, Roman Yossi can only do so much on the back end, you know what I mean? And it's it's tough to see because Preds are uh, they're to me they're probably top five team in the league, especially on paper. So it's it's tough to for, uh, to see that, but. Uh, the league is super spread out now, and I know that we have. Uh, I know that you have some opinions on uh, on the Dallas Stars, and uh, and their new coaching, and how they and how they're going to progress. I know you and I actually share that opinion. Yeah, it actually started on a conversation I had about PK Subban, and I just kind of said, well, maybe Dallas is one of those teams that can go out and make the acquisition for him. But uh, as you come closer to their numbers, they're right up against that salary cap. They almost have no flexibility at all. But then you start looking at this is a team that has just been put together with a bit of homegrown and then a lot of shrewd moves. Uh, you know, we're, the jury's still going to be out on a Joe Pavelski or a Corey Perry, but when you went to get into the second round last year, you wonder what, what those two guys might offer in, in a series. They previously spent that money on Alexander Radulov, who's of course, they made the Tyler Sagan trade a couple of years ago, which has just been a brilliant move. Jamie yeah. Ben, a homegrown. And you look at the drafting record on defense. Miro Heiskanen, Essa Lindell, and John Kling- Klingberg. You know, those might not necessarily hold names, but that's because Dallas doesn't end up on Hockey Night in Canada. They don't get the Rogers or TSN spotlights. But those three 
defensemen can all skate, they can all move the puck, they can all play on the power play, and they're all defensively responsible. So then you start adding in the and you start mixing this whole team together and start looking at guys like even Roman Polak and Andre Sakara, a guy that sent down to the AHL last year, coming in and contributing as a third pairing on the defense and uh, goaltending. They have the number one safe in the league. You have Anton Hudobin at second in the league at 931, Ben Bishop at sixth at 926. And this isn't just a one-year aberration. Two. Dave, uh, you know Terry and I are both Montreal Canadiens fans. Well, I'm a Canadiens fan. Terry loves selling his season tickets. Uh, it's been tough for both of us for that reason. Um, I just want to know, uh, is there any hope on the horizon for us? So I declared it last Thursday Gazette that uh, marked the time on January 3rd, I believe it was about 8.51 a.m. Eastern that it was over and done once they lost that game to Tampa Bay. They've continued to lose uh, since, of course, they lost again this. They're they're just caught in transition. You have some veteran talents. You have guys like Weber and Price uh, probably truly contribute on the ice at this point. And then you have a bunch of guys who are still young trying to work it through. And then you have those who Thomas Tatar is a, a fine hockey player, but mm-hmm. you're asking him to be a top six forward. And I don't know if that that's the answer for this team and even a Jeff Petrie you're asking this guy essentially to be a number a number first at least not a number one defenseman but certain first pairing defenseman in terms of the minutes you're asking him to play I I don't think the team I don't think the team has it I they're, they're just and Julian lose their jobs it actually is a pretty tantalizing job for the next person who comes in because after years and years, Bergevin's draft record is maybe starting to pay some dividends when you have guys like Romanoff and Paling uh, who are the way up and we see how well Suzuki's playing this year even as a kid and cut the Emmy is not a perfect player but he's, a, he's an effective NHL player so whoever's going to take the job is, is acquiring something tantalizing but they just seem like they're stuck in a, in a middle land right now it's I'm, I'm a season ticket holder and it's actually frustrating to see Cole Julian sit on it sit on his uh, his uh, his young guys he doesn't let them play he's the, he did the same thing in Boston he always he he goes with his veterans and you do that when you're in the playoffs and you've already established your 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 identity the Habs don't have an identity now they're a fast team but they really don't have an identity Weber's been playing out of his fucking mind and they're six points out of the playoffs I don't see them getting in and I can't stand the fact that Tatar's eating up all these minutes when we have a guy like Paling in the minors you have a guy like Suzuki who's playing extremely well that's only getting 14 13 minutes a game and it's like I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to do and how he's trying to develop these young guys. He's not going to win a Stanley Cup this year. It's a hunt. There's no way they're winning a Stanley Cup this year. Put your young guys in and figure it out. Signing Kovalchuk is great to put people in the seats. His first game, I couldn't even sell my tickets. I had to give them away for free. So, I mean, I don't know what Kovalchuk is going to bring to your team. Is he, wow. going to, is he going to help with the power play? I don't know. But they need to start playing the young guys. And as much as... The Montreal Canadiens organization hates the hates the rebuild. They refuse to rebuild. This is the time. Get rid of Julien. Bring keep uh, uh, promote Ducharme. He's a young guy. He's French. He's a good coach. He coached the World Juniors to a championship. He he knows how, what to do with young guys. Put him in there. There's a lot of young talent on his team. You mentioned Romanov. Romanov had a sick World Juniors this year, and we need these guys to be able to feel motivated. They're not motivated under Julien. That that's a sort of backtrack to what you said about having to give away your tickets last night. What an indictment of kind of the general enthusiasm of the fan base to say that you couldn't even sell the tickets at, uh, at let's let's call it uh, uh, below market value. To 50 bucks. Nobody wanted here. to buy them for 50 And bucks. That you're giving them away for free. I mean, that, that really tells you. Yeah. But you also yeah, like that, that, really, tickets... that really tells you about the... You, you also announced that your tickets are uh, were, like were 50 bucks like or even free like way too late though. So it's also on you. No, but like the fact that I tried to sell them, I couldn't. And then I posted it like free. I'm I'm not gonna fight with this anymore. It's two games I have to give out for free. I gave away Tampa Bay Lightning at the beginning of the year for free. Do you think that maybe it's because people... I think we lost Dave? Yeah. yeah. Do, but, oh, I just want to say, do you think? No, no, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, there you go. Nice. Back. You got me back. Do you do you think also you sold it for free because everybody knows now that you're willing to give tickets away for free? It happened once and it was early in the season. And other than that, I mean, it's just it's I couldn't sell them. Nobody's really reached out to me. I actually sold these tickets. Somebody give them back to me. So then I put, <laughs> yeah, I put them back up. I put them back up, and then, and then I was like, okay, so if nobody wants them, then I'll just put them up for free. Like at this point, I don't give a fuck. So, 
I have a question for you, Dave. It's it's, it's haunting me. Uh, Dave Brown, of course, joins us, as we said. Uh, he's the host of Live from Studio 5 on AMI TV, uh, weekdays 9 a.m. on AMI. Uh, Dave, uh, I need to know, is it that Claude Julian looks like a penis or is it that he looks like he wears a scarf of foreskin? Ooh. You know, now that you mentioned the penis thing, I don't know that I can unsee that. Yeah, it's there forever. Scarred. You're scarred. My gosh, if he gets like really flabby, because like he's actually got a pretty like, you know, like he's already got some flab around the neck. If that neck gets any flabbier, I don't know, man, that's going to look like a real uh, case for some blue chew. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Dave, thank you for joining us. It sucks that we just got proper internet going. Eagle, Eagle threw in another AOL disc and we, we were able to actually hear you. Uh, we'll have you on very soon um, so we can talk more about this stuff. We love having you on. Uh, but unfortunately, we're running short on time and Eagle yeah, wasted our time guys. with those goddamn discs. <laughs> I feel you guys. No, no, don't sweat it. The internet, uh, the internet's a cruel mistress. I do a live show every day. <laughs> I know how these things go. So it's all good, boys. You guys keep up the great work. Thank you. Thanks, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. And uh, you can uh, you can you can subscribe. Yeah, you can always subscribe. Right. They get the shows, then they choose to listen to it or yeah, subscribe not. on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and then follow us at Hot Sauce Sports on every social media. No one, uh, you can't be oversubscribed because that's not a word. Exactly. So, so subscribe just the amount of right amount of time. Be a word. And fire! 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 Nice. Okay. Okay. So Gettleman buys com buys a computer. Gettleman buys a computer. Yeah. What does that mean? How is that news? Uh, super slow computer, so give me a sec. Basically, he, during oh, a press okay. conference, announced that he's uh, much more advanced. Oh, we can't play decided, this clip, though. Decided to, uh, decide, he so basically said... So over time, since I got here... Listen to the show, Eagle. We generated, we have rebooted, so to speak, and done a lot of things behind the scenes that needed to be done. Uh, John alluded to them yesterday. Um, we've completely redone our scouting situation, our per how we look at college personnel, how we look at pro personnel. We have, we're in the process of, we've hired four computer folks, uh, uh, software. Four computer folks. completely redoing our, he said the word software. our college and pro he scouting just, systems. Software. He said the word software like it was a forward concept. He's like, uh, how old? hired four computer guys, software, <laughs> uh, buttons. It's like every boss I've ever had. <laughs> uh, Eagle check the internet is what he was saying, basically. Oh Cod Red, God Cod bless Red, his soul. Cod, caught Red Sox handed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the Red Sox apparently were using uh, replay film replay to, replay. to steal signals. Look, stealing signals is part of baseball. I don't understand why using technology to do it's any different than mm -hmm. what teams have always been doing. Yeah. Uh, let's stop pretending this is a big deal. It's the only reason we're even talking about baseball so if anything science stealing it's not even cheating it's saving the sport <laughs> okay sure, it's not? saving the sport saving the sport sure the, what the happens in boston stays in boston the ab right? curse the ab curse uh, antonio brown trolled his former teams in a tweet after that none of them advanced enough nfl playoffs it is the ab curse because you're such a fucking cancer that even when teams don't have you on the team you still fucking run that said the patriots could have used them just the patriots saying. probably could have done really well with him actually but also here's played. the thing he you would have been suspended anyway yeah, <laughs> so. also ab train apparently he challenged logan paul to a boxing fight so i'll watch we'll see it. what happens yeah. with that. logan paul is gonna it'll be on the zone it'll be logan, on the zone for logan sure. paul will Kick the shit out of you. Really? And I'll put my life, my left. Yeah, he's actually not, not bad. He's line. not bad at all. Not bad at all. Huh. He's, a, on he's a legit boxer. Flat Earther is going to kick his ass. Yeah. Yeah. That's he's crazy. a legit boxer. Like a legit amateur boxer. That's it. XFL rules. New rules by XFL. Let's talk about it. I love, I love the convert rules. I've been saying, so it's a flag football league we all work with that I always said had the best convert rule in sports where you can attempt to play from the two or attempt to play from the five for one point or two points. They're even allowing a three point convert. I fucking love this i think this is great it's so much fun because nobody likes kickers stop go soccer not something. even kickers like kickers exactly they hate themselves yeah they hate them you like think fuck martin, i can't believe i'm a kicker you think martin grammatica is jacking off to himself no he doesn't like himself <laughs> so vander jack more like vander get the hell out just saying no need for kickers xfl you th that's the only reason i'm watching that one rule i like the uh i like the punts rule law law offices of richard sherman yeah, so Richard Sherman and Mike Florio got into it. And so Richard Sherman's like, you know, 
he got criticized for his deal that he negotiated himself, and he was saying that Pro Football Talk, Mike Florio, uh, went after him because it's it's a, a website that's uh, got investors that are agents, and obviously they have the agents, uh, you know, um, agents in, in their pockets and so on. Um, and then Mike Florio basically responded by saying, "Well, that's a lie." So I guess we'll see you in court. Mm. And then Richard Sherman, not backing down, said, "We'll handle it the way you want to handle it." I, like it. Um, I mean, look. It would be cool if it didn't happen the same year Richard Sherman accused people of not shaking his hand, even though we saw Baker Mayfield shaking shake his, his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Once we got the camera angles, maybe, maybe Richard Sherman's taking a few hits. I think Richard, I think Richard Sherman is not career. the subject of, uh, he's not the topic of discussion anymore. He's trying to make himself that. He's been very good, though. He's been picks, very good. Picks, very picks, good picks, 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 picks. Okay, Vikings 49ers. I'm going to go Niners. I will also go Niners. Reluctantly, Niners. I will not reluctantly. It's Kirk Cousins to stop. Titans, Titans, Ravens. Titans, baby. Nah, Ravens. Texans, Chiefs. I got Titans, Seahawks in the Super Bowl Te- for Texans, six and a half Chiefs. games. Texans, Chiefs. Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs, yeah. Texans did everything they tr- did, did to try to lose that game and couldn't. Seahawks, Packers. <laughs> uh, Seahawks. Clemson, uh, Packers, Packers I don't like it. Can I say your name <laughs> pick? Well, it's in Madison, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to say Seahawks. Now, now you can introduce the next Cle- Clemson, LSU. Uh, LSU's an NFL team, so give me LSU. I'll take LSU all day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. You've... 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 Just need to hot sauce for this. <laughs> I forgot what the thing was. 